Okay, so first of all, Mitt Romney tonight, this is this is what he thinks is going to be his biggest challenges. This is clip number one, Shano. Uh, Mitt Romney really thinks this is, he's going he's gonna to have to struggle horribly with this. Here he is. But I think the, the challenge that I'll have uh, in the debate is that the president uh, tends to, uh, uh, how shall I say it, uh, say things that aren't true. And, uh, and, and in attacking uh, his opponents. I've looked at prior debates, and, and in that kind of case, it's, it's difficult to, to say, well, am I going to spend my time correcting things that aren't quite accurate, or am I going to spend my time talking about the things I want to talk about? Well, that's, that is a challenge. Uh, probably, given, given that it's possible to interpret certain types of realities in varieties of ways, I mean, that might be a challenge for both sides. I know that's one of the big challenges I have when I'm debating conservatives, or anybody on any topic for that matter, is if they bundle three or four things that I think are wrong into a single sentence and then end up with a question mark, it's like, which one do you take? Do you unbundle that? And if you don't take all of them, have you just implicitly agreed with them? It's like, you know, the, the other day on Meet the Press, David Gregory asked David, asked David Pluff, a question, this long question that had all these pieces to it, and right in the middle of the question was, and if the president cuts Medicare as he said he wants to do. Well, he's not said he wants to do that. But that was right in the middle of the question, and David Pluff yeah, basically had no, no opportunity to answer that because that wasn't what the big question was all about. We're going to have to dig that clip out and play it for you. It's mind-boggling. So Bill Crystal, the guy who had the brilliant idea for John McCain, that he should take Sarah Palin as his running mate. This was Bill Crystal's idea. He met her on a cruise to Alaska. No, seriously, they, they have these cruises, you know, and the, the, the right-wingers, they, they rent a cruise ship, and you can go and hang out with your favorite, you know, right-wing star, you and Bill Crystal, you and Michelle Malkin. And uh, he was on this cruise to Alaska. He met, he met uh, Sarah Palin, and he thought, wow, she could be a vice president. She could be president. So here's his advice. To Mitt Romney. Uh, and I think he needs to go right at Obama. My main advice would be ignore Jim Lehrer, ignore the moderator, sort of like Juan does with you. You know, when Juan and I, when Juan argues with me and, and just ignores all that, all, all that, of yes. your questions and all that, he's got to take, do not get, do not answer Jim Lehrer, go after President Obama. Don't answer the moderator, just go after the other guy. Um, well, that's, that's actually not all that uncommon. I've seen it done a lot, so we'll see. Chris Christie. Now, actually, let me let me back these up. Here's Dan Senor. He's uh, lowering debate expectations. Clip number four. Sounds like you're sounds like you're trying to lower expectations, expectations now. Well, well, I mean, well, I'll, I'll mean, tell you that President Obama is a very experienced uh, debater. We saw how he did in 2008, and Vice President Biden, I would say, is one of the most experienced uh, debaters in in uh, national politics. He's been doing this for decades. He's run for president a few times. So. These are, these are very accomplished, experienced men that, uh, on the debate stage. Now, that's the official narrative of the Romney campaign, is it's going to be tough. You know, Mitt doesn't, you know, he's never had a presidential debate before with a, with a sitting president, or even with a, an actual candidate from the other side with a Democrat. I mean, he's always debated Republicans. And he just, you know, he, he and he's not the, the world's greatest debater. He's, he's you know, he's a... He's a multimillionaire, a hundred millionaire, but debater. Eh. But there's one guy who had something different to say, and there's something about this one guy. The one guy was Chris Christie. Here's what Chris Christie had to say, clip number three. And I just know, I've watched Mitt Romney do this, and so have you, Bob, over the course of every time he was backed into a corner, um, in the primaries, he came out with a great debate performance because that's where he shines. And uh, he's going to do a great job on Wednesday night. So Chris Christie, the, the lone Republican who's out there saying, oh, yeah, expect Mitt Romney to do spectacular. Why would he be the one guy who's speaking differently than all the rest? Well, maybe because Chris Christie very much wants to run for president in 2016. Chris Christie was in Iowa last week. Now, what's Chris Christie doing in Iowa? He's the governor of New Jersey. Why is he going around small towns in Iowa, going to county fairs and things, and, and, and eating you know, fried ice cream on a stick? Um, because he wants to be president. He's, he's trying to you know, 
chummy up with the Republican establishment in Iowa. Why? Well, Iowa's where it all begins, sort of. You know, Iowa, New Hampshire, you know, it's, it's... So, is this an attempt by Chris Christie to sabotage Romney? Or is it simply Chris Christie saying, I'm the optimistic guy. I'm the guy who knows, you know, it always, it always works. You can count on me. I mean, just think back to his speech at the RNC. It was not about Mitt Romney. It was really not even about the Republican platform. It was about Chris Christie and how wonderful he is, how smart he is, and all the things he's done in his life and where he came from and how he got here. And now, and, and then, you know, finally, this is uh, Paul Ryan. This is a, yesterday he got this question. Uh, what do we do about these people who uh, don't feel like they own the country? We have uh, 47% the people in the United States pay no taxes, federal income tax. Is there any way possible that this 47% can pay a nominal fee or something so they feel that they have small ownership in the government and maybe they won't take all the handouts so readily? I got an idea. Let's help them get jobs so they can get a good paycheck so then they're good taxpayers. Well, that's a perfect bumper sticker. Right, and we we all think that jobs are a great idea. But are you really suggesting, Paul Ryan, that people on Social Security should get a job to pay taxes? Are you really suggesting that disabled people living on disability should get a job to pay taxes? Are you really suggesting that our military who don't pay federal income taxes should be paying taxes as they put their lives on the line? I mean, really? That the unemployed? Should be paying income, you know, some minimal fee. Well, that, the unemployed, he said, let's get him a job. I guess that's the one category. But this whole meme of the ownership society, I expect that to come up out of uh, that, that to be coming out of Mitt Romney's mouth tonight, too. So we'll be back after the break with the questions that you would like asked. 